welcome to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. It is the first official sort of main weekday after phase two has been introduced and Guys, y'all went, went crazy over the weekend. <laughs> Ikea lines were mad, orchard Town was, was rammed. It yeah. was it was absolutely mental. So let's just take it in that we, we still need to be village, uh, vigilant, vigilant. vigilant. <laughs> um, and just make sure that we do stay at home. I know that for a lot of us, we've been a bit nervous about leaving the house as well. That would be you. Yeah, so we've been staying home, uh, aside from coming out to work, for the better part of two or three months. And going out was just a bit like, uh, so I had my alcohol wipes, I had Dettol wipes, I had my own cutlery. Uh, yeah, I just, and then I went out and I felt a little bit better. You brought your own cutlery. Well, you never know. Right. But then I got some weird looks and I put them back in my bag. Good job. And I just alcohol wiped the cutlery at the places we were at. Anyway, moving on. Anyway, it's your Monday edition <laughs> of Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. And today on the show, we've got a little bit of a discussion going on. Obviously, last week, everyone was up in arms over this, are you an essential worker or a non-essential worker? But we're going to rein it back a little bit because obviously we don't really know exactly what type of artist is deemed completely non-essential. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people took offense at it. But what we realized was it was only a thousand people that took this poll and a lot of them didn't actually know what they were going in for. So what we've decided to do is have a conversation today around stable jobs and jobs that will last and go through a crisis versus following a job of passion, which may end up with you being unemployed in a time such as this. And to do so, we've got some incredible guests who are joining us on the show today. Who are they, Barbara? That's right. We've got Steve Lai coming on. Um, he is not only a newscaster for CNA, but he's also a dad of two girls. Mm -hmm. um, and we just wanted to get the aspect of a parent and, you know, do, do you want your kids to follow their passion at this point in time, given how uncertain things are at the moment? Or would you want them to have that stable future? That's right. And um, we've also got our first guest who we are both very familiar with. Yes, she was our lecturer when we were studying at Tomasek Polytechnic. Mrs. Felicia Na, um, who is a senior lecturer at Tomasek Poly's Communications and Media Management Diploma. Barbara, why don't you scoot on over and let's get Felicia over here Mrs. and join Mrs. Na, us. come on in. Mrs. Na to She's us. She's asked us to Mrs. call her Felicia, <laughs> but we physically are you cannot. Are all right there? Yes. All right? She's just perched yes. on her little <laughs> stool. Got my How on. are you doing? I'm good. I'm great. And now that I've seen the two of you, I'm even better. Oh, this is all the love right there. Yeah. What's up? <laughs> uh, I do apologize for the uh, entrance graphic because clearly I'm not an illustrator, but it just proves that we do need different people in different industries. Exactly. I and can't do someone else's absolutely. job. And an artist who is in front of the camera is not necessarily an artist who is an illustrator, uh, as Barbara's graphic has proven. But for the show, tell us a little bit about how education, you, you guys have had it a little bit rough over the past few months. Um, how has it been? Yeah, we have. Uh, we have had to switch to home learning, mm -hmm. uh, which is not exactly bad. And we've always talked about it. Uh, we knew we could do it, but we didn't actually have to do it. But this has forced us to do so. And we have been forced, staff, the staff have been forced to learn how to do it uh, online, everything online. So we've had to hold classes online. Lectures can be recorded, but tutorials, you know, you still have to be, uh, you still have to be uh, kind of looking at your, your students, mm. um, make sure the cameras are on, their microphones are on, uh, check for attention. I was going to say, it's probably the biggest thing. it is to keep their attention yeah. nowadays. Yeah, that's um, right, and engagement. Yeah. So speaking of engagement, how do you how do you make sure that you're keeping them engaged? I mean, our course was just so interactive in the classroom. Well, um, we make sure that there's a variety of learning techniques. You know, you've got videos, you've got games that you can play online and that gets them engaged as long as you meet your lesson objectives as well. So that's one sure way of getting them engaged. Kids love Kahoot. <laughs> for some reason, they, Kahoot. Kahoot is a, a, a software where you run, uh, it's an educational technology where oh. you run quizzes and they play against each other. Wow, we competition. Competition. have that, yeah. yeah. Competition. Everyone that loves a good competition. Them, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> some people like competition yeah. more than others, mm -hmm. clearly. Because I always lose. <laughs> Okay, yeah, so, but our course was one that was very, very interactive and it 
even the lectures, mm. it, it was never just a one way I'm talking at you. It was always a conversation. Yeah. So how did you get over that? Um, for lectures, I have videos mm -hmm. um, embedded in them. Um, I also ask questions and I make them ponder. Uh, and, to, and I say, you know, we'll be discussing that in the tutorial next. So you've got to think about it. So you've, you've got to plant things that will make them think. And young people love to think. They have lots of ideas. They're mm. very creative, but you just need to plant the seed for them. So that uh, is the difference in the way I do my lectures online. Now, awesome. you guys have also just released a new batch of students, a new batch of graduates into the industry, yeah, right? Yeah, did. And considering that the events industry is dead, a lot of industries are dead, to be honest. Uh, the sports industry is gone, uh, the MCs, the events crews, basically a lot of people that you guys groom to send out throughout yeah. mass communications and yeah. communications and media management. Uh, Oh, that entire industry suddenly doesn't really <laughs> exist for your graduates. Mm. What sort of advice have you been giving to them on what they can do and how are they going to approach it? I think they are equipped with the skills that are actually transferable. Um, the skills are not specific in that, um, oh, I can only do this. Yeah. Those skills are transferable, they are soft skills, and they can go on and do any job that comes to them. And in this technology, it's a very gig technology, mm. uh, rather a gig term, where uh, everyone just uh, does things on a freelance basis. Um, to this end, I know the graduates are having trouble, fresh graduates are having trouble um, looking for jobs, full-time jobs. But maybe, hey, maybe this is an era where uh, we don't work full-time jobs as much anymore. It's more, I got a gig, for three months, for six months, and that's good. Um, Here's I, me just trying to really take on this advice. <laughs> 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 we ask this question because I want the advice. <laughs> um, I mean, in, in TP, in Tomasic Poly, we've got the Kickstarter program as well, mm -hmm. uh, where we help uh, graduates upskill because we've got not just graduates which just, just came out this year, we've got graduates from two years ago who have just finished NS. Mm. That's true. Yeah, so uh, they might need a, a kickstart as well. So we've got upskill programs. We've got programs to help them uh, look for jobs now in terms of putting them in touch with our industry partners because we've built up uh, great industry links as well, TP as a whole. Um, and we also have, in TP itself, we are asking graduates, hey, you know what, um, to help you tide over, you can take on maybe a temp job with us for three to six months. Wow. Yeah, we've got oh. that going as well. <laughs> but Barbara's like, I'm not. <laughs> I'll take a job. All right, Felicia, we're going to take a short break. Sure. But when we return, we're actually going to bring on a um, parent who is going to give us the other opinion to see how they're going to be guiding his sons, uh, his daughters, daughters, rather, his daughters. <laughs> uh, sons and daughters, that's what we're looking at, the next generation, to see what sort of advice we're going to be giving them, to whether they should be following their passions or whether they should be looking for a stable job. Don't go anywhere. This is Kickback with Kelly and Barbara.
Welcome back to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. Barbara's popped off for a little while because we've brought on Steve Lai, newscaster for Channel News Asia and father of two really, really beautiful and intelligent girls, I might add. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> on their behalf. Of which thank you. you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're still discussing whether we should be following our passions in a what could be a non-essential job or whether as a parent we should be guiding our children towards maybe a more stable job which in tough times like these would still have uh, work I suppose so when the whole article came out from the Straits Times talking about essential versus non-essential jobs Steve what was your initial reaction uh, my first initial reaction was that well it needed an artist to actually put that article together and display it in a graphic that was easy for everyone to understand uh, so I thought that was quite interesting um, but you know as you mentioned earlier uh, the sample size and you know the, how narrowly or broadly the definitions were we don't know um, well, we know the sample size, but we don't know how broadly it was defined. But it's a, it's a tricky time, right? We're, we're finding so many industries, tourism, hospitality, jobs being lost left, right, and center. The push towards automation and AI has sort of gone full steam ahead because people can't be working. Mm -hmm. uh, and a lot of people working from home as well. So it's a real shakeup. But you can understand why people were a bit upset or yeah, sensitive about it because it's no one likes to be thought of as Non-essential. Non -essential. Non -essential. Like, uh, I'm not necessary. It's yeah. okay. You don't need me. I'll just go sit in the corner and cry. Yeah. <laughs> but some of the other categories, as well, some of the other, you know, uh, professions that were listed in that, you know, HR managers, consultants, uh, consultants, uh, PR, and, and and that sort of thing. It's. I guess it's unfortunate that it rubs so many people the wrong way. Um, you know, it's a time when we're all kind of trying to pull together and see what we can do to help each other as well. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, you're talking today about how we can think for the future and for, for our kids as well. And it's going to be a tough one because it's very hard to predict what jobs are going to be around. We've heard you know, various different ministers say certain industries are going to be changing forever the way they do things. So how do we prepare our young ones? And it's kind of more about how they are and their attitude towards work and, and you know, different jobs that they might take on rather than a specific, I'm learning this in school to be that when I graduate. I mean, that wasn't the case for me when I grew up. I, did a business degree, although I wanted to do sports science and, and filmmaking. And why very, didn't you? Very pragmatic parents. I had one shot at university, and they said, if you want to have a job when you come out of that, then you need to make a choice. So that was the choice I made. Um, but along the way, I had multiple jobs. I opened doors at a hotel. I uh, worked as a waiter uh, at uni, uh, even cleaned hotel rooms at one point. Wow. Um, you know, I worked in a garage equipment company for a while. You know, your whole life is, is it's a marathon, right? You yep. do a lot of different things and you pick up skills along the way. So focusing too much on what can I study in school to get me a job at the end of it, I kind of think you need to be thinking, what skills can I get as a person? Do I work hard? Do I turn up on time? Am I easy to work with? Can I communicate well? I think as, as a lecturer, Felicia's going, yes, these yeah. are all very important check, things. Check, yeah, check. and these are, these, are the, these are the things that will stand you in good stead, whatever it is you're doing. So then with your students, um, for example, I mean, you've also got two girls um, who have also just freshly graduated. Yeah, last so, year. Yeah, so how's that been for them? Did they manage to secure jobs? Are they okay? Well, one of them is still doing her master's in linguistics. Uh, the other one is a lit major. So uh, she's currently working for a local media agency. She's writing uh, news bulletins. So um, she does, and that's on a freelance basis. It's not a full-time mm. job. Mm -hmm. I've never pushed them. Uh, to do anything um, like I want them to do. Actually, I don't even know what I want them to do. I, for me, um, it's, it's all about your passion. What do you want to do? What makes you happy? What do you think you're comfortable doing? But as a parent, don't you worry that they're not going to make money? <laughs> that they're not going to have that sort of stability because it, especially in a freelance industry mm. there is no guarantee that in six months when your contract runs out that you're going to be able to find something else and mm -hmm. sort of Steve with your girls being younger mm. do you not worry about them potentially going into that I mean as someone who has transitioned and found a job in the media after mm. a while as well yeah know, I did like, lots of different things yeah. but it, it's it's about choice and consequence right and what can you live with I mean, if you want to pursue your passions in the arts or whatever it happens to be, then you have to accept that, you know, when times are tough and budgets get cut from corporate gigs or from whatever, then you are going to take a hit on that. But are you in it for the money or are you in it because you love what you do? And if you can make that choice and live with it, then I guess you're kind of okay. 
ultimately, as a parent, though, you really want your kids to be able to put food on the table and have a roof over their heads, and, and that's always going to be a concern, which is the concern my parents put on me, which has informed the choices that I made. Um, but do I have regrets that I didn't follow my passions? For sure. But you know, life life goes on. You make the best of what you can, and you know, you end up where you end up. Like I ended up reading the news. It wasn't part of the plan by any means. Mm. What about you, Felicia? Um, in terms of uh, myself, mm -hmm. I've, uh, my, my father wanted me to go into business. He wanted me to follow, to, to do business studies. But I never really had any uh, interest. That was a bit in like it. my reaction to, to business, <laughs> to doing, <laughs> like studying see, business as well. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a very broad degree. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So yeah. I just went into social sciences and the arts, uh, you know, arts and social sciences instead. And I found that more to my liking, and I was able to well secure a job, which I could, um, yeah, which I think I can do. Mm -hmm. mm. So then, Tomasek Poly has always been very, very good at predicting the future and creating courses which will enable their students yeah. and future graduates to say, okay, like, what, where do we see the need in 10 years' time and can we create a course for these? Where do you think it's going to go? Like, do you think that there's going to be more of a demand for students to take up courses which will enable them to go down that stable path? Or do you think that there's still an avenue? Because, I mean, courses like Mass Communications yeah. and Communications and Media Management, which is the course that I took, has already changed since I took it's it. It's changed. Right? So do you think that there's going to be more of a demand to go down that stable route? Or do you think we are still on that path of innovation and following pa passion? Um, we've changed. The course that you, you took um, has changed. Uh, and uh, they're still in the pipeline, uh, but we're going a lot more digital, data analytics, data content management, that kind of, of thing. Uh, but as a whole, Tomasic Poly also has other new courses. Uh, they have artificial intelligence coming up, yeah. um, and uh, there is architectural uh, studies, there is architectural technology diploma, which will be launched uh, in April 2021, so that's wow. next year. That sounds really fascinating. Yeah, it's up and coming. So they're always like forward looking and they predict um, what the industry would need and they want to cater to the industry by uh, preparing graduates for those specific skills. Having said that though, um, I think other, other students are also, because they take other subjects as well, which are soft skills, communication skills, which will, um, which are actually essential. Yes. Yeah. Which <laughs> like are like really, they are essential. They are really essential, um, especially in these times. Communication is the key. I mean, if you look at the way we've handled this as a country, communication was so important in getting people to do what they needed to do. So those are the skills as well, which I think TP prepares them for. Interesting. Yeah. Now, Steve, just to wrap up this conversation then, um, advice to other parents from your position of someone who has gone and studied what you needed to study, but mm. then has gone on to an alternative job? Well, you kind of find, as long as you can still stay interested and engaged in what it is you're doing, I think you're always going to be OK. Uh, you'll always do better in things that you're interested in, of course. but. You know, life is a long time. It's not a race to get through school. It's not a race to get through university. It's not a race to, you know, to get to be working. It's, it's just pick up the skills as you go along. But just remember that things generally can turn out OK if you have the right mindset and how you're approaching it. So if you're open to learn the lessons and, and to have the humility of, of taking a job that you don't like, mm -hmm. uh, doing a job that you're not qualified to do, but just because you need to do it because you need to earn money. Like, think of the long game. It's just, I need to do this now. It may not be what I want to do, but in the long term, it's going to lay foundations or stepping stones for me to get you know, further up the ladder or further up the chain. But you've got to keep in mind that life is tough. Life is not easy. Yeah. You know, We're learning that. And it's unpredictable. And it's unpredictable. Yeah. So if you can approach it, you know, take, it, take a moment, take it slow, think, what do I need to do? What's in the short term? and what's in the medium term and long term and don't 
worry too much. Don't stress it. Don't okay, stress it. Felicia, you stress the importance of communication, though. Yeah. So we're going to play a little bit of a game. Uh -huh. uh, oh, and <laughs> Felicia, because you were the one that said it was important to communicate okay. properly, I'm going to leave, leave you to lead this game. Right. We're going to do our version of Heads Up. So I'll give you a word, and Steve, you have to guess it, but you have to describe this word without mentioning what the, the word. word is. All right. Okay, it's so we're going to give you 60 seconds. It is a word. This The theme is occupations. Uh, okay, essential yeah, that helps. and okay. non-essential. Okay, that helps. Uh, we're going to give you 60 seconds to get through as many as you can. These are the words. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Time starts now. Okay, uh, in the court. Judge, lawyer. Uh, there we go, first one, lawyer. Oh, I can pirouette. Ballet. Very good. Dancer. Oh, sick animals. Bet. Very good. Um, training uh, people. Teacher. Uh, training people in an organization, uh, taking care of oh. their leave matters. Oh, HR. HR manager. Yeah. Very good. <laughs> oh, um, on the set, this person... Director. Yeah. Yeah, wow, he is on fire. <laughs> uh, you can... Uh, musical... Uh, uh, instrument, instrument. Conductor. I can, I can manage to make sound from an Musician. instrument. Yes, yeah. there we go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that one oh. was really, really honest. Go on. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Console. <laughs> Come on, you've got about um, five console, seconds Console, um, talking to people, oh, airwaves, airwaves. Uh, DJ, radio DJ. Yeah. There we go, and <laughs> time. Oh. Whew. How many did we get through? 12? <laughs> seven. 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 Seven in total. Is that good? I don't that, know what's, what's the gauge. That is good. good. That is good. I think we've, we've played this game and yep. we've had not very many people getting it very well. So there you go. Communication. <laughs> he was still great. Still a very well, essential he was great. <laughs> role. Uh, guys, Good thank teacher. you so much for chatting. Felicia, Most Steve, fun. really good insight. Uh, Steve, we're going to keep you around a little while longer because we're going to go for a short break and come back. It's Olympic Day tomorrow, so we figured we'd have an Olympic-themed workout. Steve's going to be leading us through. <laughs> that. <laughs> Felicia, thank you so much it for joining welcome. us. It We're up fun. for a short break. Oh, stay with us here on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara.
Welcome back to Kickback with Kelly and Barbara. I'm back again. Steve is still with us. Tomorrow is Olympic Day, which means we're going to be doing some Olympic-inspired movements. What is that? Just, I'm an athlete doing Olympic stuff. <laughs> okay, so interpretive, sure. Interpretive dance. You should, <laughs> what's, what's your score, Kelly? What's your score? Uh, there's a big fat <laughs> zero. <laughs> Well, okay. I'll give you an eight for effort. So, Steve, you're going to bring us through a workout. We're going to have 40 seconds on, 20 seconds off for yep. four rounds, right? Yes, that's right. Okay. And, and, and all of them are inspired by Olympic sports. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So, the first one is? The first one is high knees because, you know, running is one of the essential events. So, let's get to it. Okay, okay let's go. Oh, oh, we're going straight in. Yep, Woo. we're going oh. straight into this. It's just Everyone like my packs <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Did you catch yours? I got mine. I'll just hold it in my hand. I'm just, just like, okay. just keeping it in. Just tucking my shirt in. in. Oh, we've already got like another 20 seconds to go. Of yeah, come on, guys. We're, we're doing my okay. Mic pack. <laughs> Barbara seems really enthusiastic yeah. about this one today. <laughs> this is like the first exercise. <sighs> Maybe we should go a bit longer. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 10 seconds to go. Five, four, three, two, and one. And then we'll take a 20 second break. And then for the next exercise, I thought we would pay tribute to former Singapore Olympian, yes. Tan Hao Liang, okay. weightlifter. So we're gonna do- No weights though. No weights. No weights. But we'll do some sort of squats, deep squats. Oh. And have hands up. Deep like squats group. and over and above. Are we ready? Right. Yeah. Three, two, one, let's go. Oh. Yep. Oh. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Who was that? All the hips cracking, that'd be me. Yeah, I thought that was really Okay. So see if you can get below the 90 degrees with your knees. Deep squats. That's it. Oh, check out the guns, Kelly. Looking good. Yeah. <laughs> 20 seconds. Oh. Halfway there. <sighs> <laughs> Are you regretting overexerting on what? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> 10 seconds. Come on, Barbara. Yeah, this is a good workout to do at home. I mean, it's all just body weights. Don't need much space. Just keep up the tempo. Okay. And we are done. Last time, last time. Okay. Okay. That's that one done. What's the next exercise, Steve? Okay, so that one paid tribute to Tan Hao Liang, mm -hmm. uh, Olympic lifter for Singapore. Next, we'll do one in honor of our gold medalist, Joseph ah. Schooling, uh, with swimming. So we're gonna get down in a- Bar water? Yeah. <laughs> Ready? Ready? Yeah. We, got, we got budget here, we got budget now. <laughs> just kidding. Uh, down into a plank position, and we'll just start. We can start now. Uh, yep. This is good for shoulders. Do you want to keep your hips down or can you do the rotation? Uh, it's up to you. You can even make it a bit more difficult for yourself if you want and do a, a push up in between. Oh, look at you go. Hey if you're feeling a little energetic at home, we're go halfway on, through. Do the butterfly one. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, so this is a freestyle stroke if you notice. And, <laughs> and Joseph Schooling is famous for his butterfly. Okay, I'm going to try and attempt the butterfly Are one, but done? I'm going to do it on my knees. Are you ready? Yeah, go on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Joseph would be so proud. Okay, oh three seconds. Me. Two and one. Oof. And we've got 20 seconds to rest. And we can just stay down here on the floor. Because our next one's going to be on the floor as well. Nice, okay. What's the next one going to be? Good squat there by Kevin. Oh, nice. <laughs> uh, yeah, so next one's going to be... I love how we've defaulted to just uh, rowing. Down, down. We'll do like a rowing themed one. Ooh. So we can go into a lower boat pose if you know your yoga. And then... Here we go. Yeah. Rowing like Aisha, who was oh. one of our national oh. rowers before Big, she retired. Nice long oh. strokes. Anyone gonna sing? This is like a Russian <laughs> twist almost, isn't it? It certainly is. I mean, that's kind of the idea of it. We've done arms, we've done legs, we've done a bit of cardio. Yep. So I'll finish off with a bit of core. Nice. Yeah, and I guess I feel it. if you are at home and you are trying to attempt these workouts as well, then it's a great way for you to just get off your couch and stop just watching the telly, <laughs> stop Netflixing, two, and just do something one, active. Time. I love how Barbara's the first to call that one on time. Oh, yeah. the enthusiasm <laughs> to keep track of that <laughs> stopwatch was incredible. Well, thank you very much for that. We definitely got activated, I think. <laughs>
and just in time for Olympic Day as well. That will be tomorrow. There will be a special Olympic Day workout happening at 11 o'clock. If you want to know more, you can always hop onto my page. I'll be doing the Olympic workout at 11 a.m. Exciting times ahead. Steve, thank you so much for joining us, sharing no. your wisdom, your insight, and a bit of advice uh, for passion versus, versus, versus. stability. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Wednesday, who have we got, Barbara? We've got Dr. Rico from uh, Sports SG. Um, he's going to be coming in talking a little bit about um, how your diet affects how you sleep. And mm -hmm. we're also going to be having Marissa True on, someone who has suffered from insomnia, fixed it, and now can't sleep again. So we're hoping, we were hoping we can help her on Wednesday as well. Well, that's it from us today. Make sure you join us again Wednesday, 8 p.m. on Kickback with Kelly and Barbara.